Welcome everyone back to Bourbon Over Baseball with your host Bob, co-host Jeff and Matt today. Say hello everybody. What's up everyone? How's everyone doing? We are back again um, as we're continuing our draft or I guess our 2000-2000 pennant breakdown uh, videos that we're doing and um, we're going to go with the next team now. Uh, you guys have heard us break down a couple of the divisions now, but we've had some requests. Good old Will C. Oldham or Oldham, not really sure, uh, um, on YouTube wanted to see the Pirates um, and then maybe the Red Sox after that if we get lucky. But uh, the Pirates for sure. Will, I think we can do that for you. Root, root, root for our home team, a new Pirate generation, everybody shout, let's go Pirates! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see these yellow cards and you just go bam and your eyes are just ready to go. So I do love that they're that that that's the, I like the colors that of the random not random teams like the Rockies being purple and the yep. and the Oakland being green and stuff not these red and blue cards that Yeah, you I see. I can <laughs> cannot echo that anymore. I mean, so I can, I was just telling before we even started recording, I was telling my guys here that i just finished my inventory full inventory of each card i have from the 2000 and 2001 i can tell you from a sorting aspect that any cards that have a different color are great because they're so much easier to you know to take out in a stack so the pirates yellow is they're probably my favorite cards just from that standpoint that i could always find them if i need to but the blue and the red cards not my favorite yeah and i've always been a big pirates fan in general um just because they're so close in proximity and they're not in the division, you know, of the, of the Indians. Um, obviously I used to love bond back in the day when he played for the pirates. Um, and I love PNC park. What they did over there is phenomenal. You know, when they were voting online for all the best parks, I said, if it's not PNC, this, this contest is rigged because it's, it's easily the best park in all of baseball right now. I even voted the Indians. I didn't think was the best in the central. Like I think the Royals have the best, um, and the Indians might be third in my opinion. So, yeah, um, it's a park I've, I've been wanting to go to. You know, which one, tried PNC? To, to PNC. Let's I've been trying it. to. Let's take I know, a road I, trip. <laughs> when, when things are back to normal and maybe fans are in ballparks, I would <laughs> so love next that. Year? <laughs> yeah, so 2021 sounds yeah. good, truthfully. So. You'll, you'll really enjoy it. Um, for people listening that have been there, they, they know this, but that you can roll right up on a boat. You can walk across and drink on the Roberto Clemente Bridge. And the park itself feels like a minor league baseball park. It's so fan friendly. It's awesome. So, um, speaking of that team, then it's what do we have for the showdown parts? What do we got, um, Jeff, on salary? Oh yeah, let me. I'm probably gonna mess this up again. So <laughs> one second. I've I've like just I you know it's funny after the last time I did it I just said I'm not doing it ever again. Oh great. So I'm I li- keep bugging you about it. <laughs> I literally have a tab said 2,000 base team totals. So I think we're good there. So I don't want to. I'm not taking pennant run because it's up and down in terms of how much they're worth. So the um where are the pirates on here? Um, they are surprisingly high actually. Um, I guess I wasn't expecting. I think they're number nine. Well, they I know they have a couple of huge foils yeah. and then some some big pitchers. So right, so they're four they're four forty uh, okay. or forty four hundred. Sorry, okay. and they are. Uh, and let me see if I can do the average really quick here. I thought you said um, it was around four thousand, so that put them up just I, above. I average. think they're like four. Yeah, I think the average is like forty one fifty off the top of my head. Okay. Um. So yeah, no, they're. Um. I mean, that's a. Uh, I don't know why that surprised me so much. I just never really thought about it. But uh, yeah, no, they're they're pretty high up there. Well, there's a, there's a book I think that I forget what year, I think it was before this when um, obviously Bonds and them when they did the big data uh, baseball thing where they or I, actually it was I think it was in the when they when they made the playoffs after that like Bonds era ended, um, I think it was that when they made the playoffs again and they wore the all black jerseys. They talked about how they like um, you know. Are small market teams, so they gotta like grab undervalued people and make them really big, you know, the small market team. So yeah, heck yeah. So speaking of, then we got Mike Benjamin, um, who I've seen actually drafted a lot. My guess is because he's a shortstop plus five and an A speed. Yeah, I mean this is a, I mean I the on base is horrible, but like I actually don't really hate much else about this card. Yeah. It feels, I mean it's just high for one ten, but again we've we've just learned that there's just not a ton of like really low budget um useful guys look in the 2000s six set. sideburns he's got going on oh man and look at his arm like he looks he's jacked in this picture this is a <laughs> this is a great 
This is a great picture for him. And the, that that black jersey, oh, and yeah. with that with that patch on the side, that and the the Pirates logo is incredible. And then it also on the hat as well. This is this is a top notch design card right here. Yeah, I like him in the sense of if you're building like that team, he's the great guy to put next to your if you've got two 500 point players. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's kind of when you were talking about his arm being jacked, it reminded me of that thing I posted about um, Derek Dietrich. He was like, I do think my home runs come from my biceps. <laughs> you're right. It is like just ridiculous picture. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I want to see any of the guys in the steroid era with their shirts off. It probably, dude, it would have been. It's, like they could have done any ballpark as a bodybuilding competition, oh, yeah. you know, and they all win. Especially you know? like, especially like Oakland when when Canseco and McGuire were there. Just hell yeah, dude! Fucking Bash Bros, Jack City. I I don't I can't explain the amount of money I would pay to see them with their shirts off in the late eighties bashing, you know, yeah. bashing with their with their just gigantic forearms that are oh, yeah. the size of my legs. Next up, we got Chris Benson. Um, so this is again, this is your typical three one through sixteen out guy. A little bit on the pricier side, because um, you know, like I said, I like mine around three twenty, three thirty here. Um, but again, we're, we're talking about ten points or twenty points here. Um, but just average, pretty pretty solid. Um, this is the jerseys I like. Um, Jeff is the gray pinstripe. Um, so this is the Bonds jersey that I have is the gray pinstripe jersey. Right. I really like the way it looks. And th those black hats with the just the simple, you know, the P, or the yellow P, just look just I, honestly like. I think like they might be some of my favorite like kind of color combinations and jerseys in the in in the league. Yeah, I don't know why do it. it's just just unique. And there's not enough like you were saying before. There's not enough teams with, um, you know, with different colors other than red and blue. And that's why I love the Athletics jerseys. And um, and I used to love the Diamondbacks. You know, that's why when they do the retro purple, it looks so incredible. And that's why when they went to black and red, I just kind of was like, what are you guys doing? Like. Uh, yeah so so anyway it, it, it really really works for them are you on twitter right now jeff i am not but i guess i'll jump in there matt's uh matt's oh, oh. <laughs> sorry yeah guys i gotta leave for a second and just to catch everyone up i have two pictures of mcguire with no shirt on and jose canseco with no shirt on so yeah <laughs> Beer, I gotta leave for at least a minute. So you, said you, um, you needed it. So I got. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They. Uh, those guys, man. So those I mean, this, so get back to Chris Benson though. Pretty solid. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be mad about this card. Um, I think this is very typical, very average. Right. He's just got the bigger ground ball chart. I think yeah. that's probably where the extra points is. Yeah. Next up is Adrian Brown. Uh, o OF of plus zero, but an eight for two ten. Um, what I don't like about this card is the big ground ball rate on his own chart yeah yeah dude and then wow. a, and a huge single range so he doesn't help yeah, you he's like not doing you a lot yeah i mean i love that it's a 200 point like eight on base guy like i like those kind of guys but i just really wish like when i see those ground balls i'm like i'm getting killed i know inning yeah. killers for sure happening with this guy right next up brant brown so Brent Brown is like, uh, who was the guy we talked about? Khalil Mack or whatever it was not Khalil Mack. Kareem Garcia. Kareem Garcia. Kareem, Khalil Mack. Yeah, I love, it's funny. I was just looking at Kareem Garcia today. So it's so like. This is basically Kareem Garcia. Um, he's got the outfield plus one, five on base. Terrible. Only two outs. Monster home run range. <laughs> oh my. Seven double. This, I can't. This is also I, like, a, looks like a spring training photo. Like yeah. he's got the Maybe weird that. old hat on and like. I don't know this guy. That's that's a first baseman's mitt too, <laughs> dude. That's not it, an outfielder mitt. <laughs> I like. I have someone spent two twenty on this guy in our league. Like I just can't I've done imagine. it in the long, in the way past, but not not since I knew better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For, for ten less points, you can get an eight on base that does nothing. Yeah, but, exactly. Right. I guess like what's what's the trade off here, right? Like, would you rather have an eight on base that ground you know ground ball outs on his own chart or? A, or a Brant Brown who will hey, never, never yeah, get what's the uh, What did he do that year? Uh, I, we just talked about it in the Marlins podcast. Um, this, I'll this, pull it up. But. Yeah, this, if you could pull up. I just want to see, like, what did, did he did he pan out? Because didn't he get did he, did he get another card in the oh on the Mar no he's on the Marlins. Oh, in the pennant. pennant. That's right. Yeah, because yeah. he was two thousand was his last season in the in the majors, and yeah. he played. He only had 102 plate appearance in 2000, or wow. 178, sorry. How long was he in the league in general? 
96 to 2000. Oh, okay, so it's quick. Um, and for 99, he had 16 homers and 371 plate appearances. So they were projecting to be like a 30 home run guy at a 13 clip. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Seems a little ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, and his Marlins. Do, I think we did the Marlins because I've looked at. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did the pennant right. run version. Um, yeah, and he. I mean, he's it's a fifteen through twenty in mm-hmm. that one. Yeah, and he doubles at ten, but he's one sixty. I mean, sixty extra points. I'm just gonna get the Pirates version yeah. and just see what happens. Yeah, I still. Uh, I don't know if I would spend two twenty these these <sighs> days, but it's pretty funny if someone, especially in like a. Uh, a blind draft. Like, this would be the guy I'm worried about in a blind oh, draft. Like, oh, yeah. fuck, this guy's coming up, and I have my three <laughs> control pitcher up. <laughs> oh, I would love to accidentally end up with this guy. Yeah, yeah. I would be so okay with it. <laughs> Next up, we got Brad Klontz. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, yeah. Here you go, Jeff. No doubles. Dude, um, this is like every reliever in the set is no doubles. Is he a side <laughs> yeah. armor? Uh yeah, and look it at, looks like he is. And look at his, uh, just again, little, uh, that jersey oh, is, is slightly different. Than, this is a spring training. This, this is definitely spring, spring training. training. But then look at the hat with the, yep. the well, that the was, full, what, yeah, this has got to be some kind of, um, again, we always find the best photos in spring training too. So I don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, it's a great, it's a great picture, but it's a pretty um, cool card too. Three for 120. This is pretty standard here, but I, I really like the no doubles and the single 1920 here. Yep. Um, it feels pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the, someone's played with this guy in our league too because of the no doubles. I'm honestly like, and I'm just thinking back to our leagues and like, it, it's been like, it's, it's funny. It's only been like a year, but it's felt like so much longer. Um, but my gosh, like there's no shortage of just incredible relievers at any given moment. So I like, it's so funny. Cause like, I feel like maybe that's what didn't prepare me for like, the 2018 and 2019 draft just because there were definitely less good relievers or at least like but let's just take this this clowns card here for a second like there's there's not many cards like this in the 2018 2019 sets mm-hmm. so like these guys got gobbled up instantly whereas like i was probably training my mind to say oh i'll be able to get a guy like that at any point because yeah. that's how it worked in the 2000 set but you know not now so it's just it's just vastly different, you know? I also like the snarling Pirates logo in the background right underneath him. Yeah, he's, like, great. looking at us. <laughs> so great. It's so great. It probably doesn't help that I'm, like, really into uh, Lego Pirates right now, so it's, like, really <laughs> feeding into this. So. Yeah, you're making me into Lego Pirates right, <laughs> right now. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not just what You need to have more than one fandom, you yes. know? And, <laughs> So. Next up, we got the first foil for them is the big Brian Giles. So obviously, Ooh. I think every one of us is here is a fan of Brian Giles, um, but just just a monster of a card. You know, anytime you get a ten on base, seventeen home run guy, you're definitely getting your your money's worth here. Um, obviously, I, I six hundred and ten points is a lot, um, but fifteen doubles not bad. I mean. I, I, he's a pretty solid card. I've seen him play it a couple times. I feel like you can get value in other places, but um, doesn't hurt you on the ground balls. I, I, he's pretty solid. Yeah, he's versatile too, since you get the any outfield. Absolutely. Yep. And there's not like I think we've talked about this. Like, there's not a ton of guys that double um, like 15, 14 definitely not third except for brant brown apparently but like i mean like actually good players that yeah. can get the can get the advantage like so i think a double at 15 is actually is, is pretty awesome um yeah, yeah this, this is this card feels very valuable i mean again 610 pretty pricey because you, if you think about it, normal salaries are 5,000 or 5,500 for most leagues and you're talking 18 to 20 players for most most leagues um it's okay. a pretty good big chunk of your salary to, to spend on a brian giles but um I really think anytime you're going to get a 10, 17 home run guy, you're going to be pretty well off. I mean, what was, uh, what's Tatis? He's a 10, 18 home he's run. He's 570. Yeah. He's 570, but he's an A speed. Um, what about Chipper? I mean, Chipper's 610. Chipper's an A speed as well, right? Right. But he's a plus three third baseman, isn't he? Uh, is that he... I couldn't tell you. His home, and his home run range is, is 18. 18. Okay. I would okay. rather have Giles, personally. Yeah, that's. Right. That's what's interesting there. So I mean, and also he looks like he's fucking killing this ball. <laughs> he's crushing the ball, and I love this picture. Yeah, right? I guess I, I never realized design. like the the seventeen. I think I, every time I always thought about him, I always thought he was another eighteen guy, uh, home run. But man, he ten seventeen home run is very powerful. I just 
man, 610 points is a lot to spend on any player. Don't get me yeah. wrong. No, I totally agree. Unless, and that's the thing is that like, I think this guy is close to kind of checking all the boxes of like a player that I would choose to draft at that 610, like around that mark. Like I think a lot about the Mookie Betts card um, from the 2018 set, like, like that card also checked every box oh, and like, everything. Right. He did everything. He's like, he's definitely, he's taking this card. He's got better outfield. He's faster. Um, his chart, I think was probably slightly worse than, than Giles. Like, um, but, but that's the thing is that it's really, it, I, it's such a tough decision. I feel like to really get to that point of saying they have everything I need. I'm taking them. Like I'm all in on this decision, you know? Yeah. I just, I just hate spending over 600 points. I thought it was like the, the best thing ever to get someone like this. I, I grabbed that Bob Gibson card back in the day. And uh, I, you know, for 800 and something points, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm locking up a team. But what you realize is you really hurt the rest of your team by jumping up so much salary. So really, when I when I break the 600 mark, I better get, like, tremendous value. He seems like he's about there. So this is a very right. right on the border card for me to draft. Agreed. Next up, another foil this is Jason Kendall. Um, Love this card. Oh, yeah. So this card gets drafted all the time. I mean, you're now you're talking about a 10... For under 500 points, you get the A speed and you get a huge arm. So this this right here is one of the highly draftable catchers. If it's usually not like either you're punting and you're going down to like you know Castillo or something like that, or like Henry Blanco or something. But you're, um, or if you're going Ivana Rodriguez. But if you're not like Kendall's like number two off the board every time. Right, I had him. Uh, uh, he was my when we did our our mini season last summer. Um, which I think was last summer. My gosh, like time is relative, right? Um, I had him, like we had 12 teams, I think, and he was actually my first pick in the first round. Um, I just think that like I probably, maybe I was, I think I went too value too fast in that one. But I think like with catchers, especially, like if you can get a catcher that actually does other things, like, and has an incredible arm, like I, I, they're just, I feel like their value just skyrockets and, you know, we're talking about the plus nine arm, which is great, but the speed A is just the best. And that's what I, mean, I this, think. I think the he, speed A is what puts it over the top. Like, right. He can bat one. He can bat yeah. the first spot, yeah. which is what I did with him. You that's, know? that's I think the most incredible thing. It's like, you're, you're locking up the catcher arm. So you're locking them down the bases. You got a great, you know, I don't see Jason kind in real life being a leadoff hitter, but we're talking about just showdown capacity. Yep. I got a 10 A speed that gets on base. Like, yep. yeah, maybe he's not a big power hitter, but he can at 16 he's getting a single plus like that's pretty damn good <laughs> yeah dude i'm I, and, and statistically going back to like that in in 99 he had like half the at bats he had in 98 and 2000 and he still had 22 stolen bases he only had 334 plate appearances he had 22 steals in 2000 he had 22 and in 98, he had 26. So he was on a tear in 99. Jeez. That's got unheard or something. That's got to be unheard of for yeah, a catcher, I right? I think catchers don't steal these days. Yeah. How many that's... catchers are there of all of the cards you've made? Probably two, maybe? Right. How I... many what? What was the question, Matt? How many Speed A catchers? Oh, well, Yvonne's in Speed A. Yeah, but there's probably like two. Four, yeah. Maybe four. Dude, yeah. and I bet they're not stealing 22 bases on 300 and whatever. Well, I think they, you know, they went to a different – once after this sort of era ended, they started to go, I want a catcher that's going to pitch frame or get runners out or he's going to hit the ball. I don't care if he's not fast. <laughs> but, right. man, this, 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 this card in general is like, I think, what you were talking about, Jeff, uh, checking all the boxes. Okay, "Quote unquote," he doesn't have the most power, but you're talking about a guy that single plus is at 16. That's pretty good. You know, he's doubling 18. So let's just think he's he's moving runners around. But you're talking about now a leadoff hitter or a two, you know, uh, he ain't gonna hurt your lineup. But you locked up catcher arm defense wise, a speed 10 under 500 points. I mean, this is a very very solid card. He gets drafted all the time. Yep, that's that's why I did it. He's checking so many boxes at the same time. Yeah, I prefer I him over Ivan Rodriguez. You know, Ivan's got the 11 arm, but He's an eight, and this is the ten. I mean, this is yep. what I want. I think Yvonne's like four fifty, isn't he? Yeah. But he's got the power. But I, yeah, I would no. still rather have uh, Jason. Well, Yvonne's at speed eight, but I, I think I'd rather have Jason Kendall. 
in my opinion. But I think I, it's just more versatile for what you're for like putting a lineup together. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can that with this type of card, you can put him anywhere and you'll have success. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a fun debate. Maybe I'll put up a poll when this podcast goes out on which one you'd rather have. Well, I don't like it. Yvonne or Jason? Yeah. That, that's pretty close. I mean, I think I'm leaning towards Yvonne or sorry, Jason because of the ten on base and he doesn't hurt you. Uh Yvonne's got that power and I've seen Yvonne crush, but I just think for 10 more points, I'm getting, what, two less arm, two less power, but I'm, like, getting the on two more man. on base. I think that's worth it. Right. It's so it's such a big deal. It's a, what I, is I think a, it's... What's Avon's uh, outrange? Do you know? Let me find him. Yeah. Because that would be the most interesting thing to know is, like, okay, so he's got a four outrange, which I've seen actually hurt people. But if Avon was, like, a two... That'd be interesting. But if he's a four also, then I, I give it to Jason. Wow, this is kind of a bonk. I mean, this is a, he's one, he's he's the same ground, he's one to three ground ball, oh, four fly ball. Yeah, I got him up. And then he doesn't walk, which is really interesting. And then he's single at five, single plus at 13, double at 15, and homer at 17. Yeah, he's a power fucking catcher. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's like, he doesn't walk, that's why he's an eight. You should, uh, uh, wow. Matt, you should put him in the um, Garber versus Satis also a spot in the blo- in the discord <laughs> right we've, yeah we've had a channel going for these types of debates so this is perfect next up we got al martin um wow look at this chart wow wow <laughs> lots I'm of in. fun to be had yeah so again you don't really love having a seven on base guy but you get the a speed here for 320 plus fielding doesn't hurt you in the out categories and then just look at this chart 11 single plus 13 double tons of power this right. is a pretty I mean, fun card. Yeah, I mean, 320 yeah. feels like a lot, but I wouldn't doubt, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't doubt someone for picking this. No. You know, sevens is where I, I usually don't want to go lower than eight, but, and then when I usually do, it's because I'm punting at a spot to get s- space, but in a deeper league or a blind draft, this card, you're loving it. Like, and that would be more fun, I think, uh, Jeff, if we had more than 12 people in our league, even though 12 is a fucking shit ton of people. Right. Um, you know, when you start to go deeper, it's like, okay, where do you find really good value? Like, oh, an Al Martin could be really good, but I feel like in like a eight person league, he's not getting picked up. You just no, you're, you're you're punting or you're grabbing monster Jig Ben G- I don't know, Brian Giles. You're, yeah, you're I think so- we saw a lot of that in my with my league this year. Is like when it became a twenty person draft, like those sevens all of a sudden have a lot more appeal. I love it. I I love the deeper leagues. I've always wanted to play. Um, a fantasy uh, online league uh, for like an AL only where, so the league's technically cut in half yeah. and then you only get to draft like half the league, which makes it technically deeper. Even though the, the players, the managers didn't get doubled, the, the pool got shorter and we could, we could always do something like that. That'd be kind of fun too. Jeff would be yeah. like, you know, we are doing an AL only, you know, 12 team or 10 team yeah. league. Be like, oh, Dude, shit. I'd, be, I'd, <laughs> I'd be so in like, I think yeah. that, I think like the one thing that's like one of the most fun things in our drafts is like, that point where you see people kind of flipping from like you know the best players um to the value picks yeah, and, and how I think, early they do it <laughs> right and i think when you when you kind of um when you shorten the sample size or you just make it you know you make it smaller um it becomes like there's definitely that value moment but i feel like a lot of it is like there's not as many great players to grab and, and since your salary is the same like I, I think sometimes it goes along you know it, it goes along with whoever the best player is gets picked but yeah man there's those there's those value picks that like they have to get picked at some point and they get picked early sometimes just because they're so worth it yeah. um so it's, it's really interesting it, it's just yeah I, I could talk forever about how, how fun that stuff is so another random side note here about image stuff uh again this is just me being weird but uh look at how strange the pittsburgh script is with no dot above the eye <laughs> Huh. Yeah. So the one, the jersey I'm wearing right now, which is the Bonds jersey, the P is so close to the I that there really is no room for the dot. And this one, it looks like it's so far away. I'm just surprised they didn't put it in there. It just seems a little blank. <laughs> Yeah. Again, I'm just nitpicking, guys. You know, for people listening. No, that's shut I. The I fuck I, out, Bob. <laughs> no, I love I love finding things like that. So, no, that's like, and now I'm looking at the other cards to see if I can find if, the, and it doesn't look like there is. So no, I just I googled the script and to see if it was like a thing, and it it again the jersey I'm wearing doesn't have it either. Just interesting. 
those maybe the, maybe I got to get a Bonds or Clemente jersey because these jerseys are just I'm kind of well. So them. I always debated <laughs> like, like what jersey to get. Clemente I think is the best Pirates player, um, you know, in my opinion. I didn't want to get like a Hannes Wagner or something. So like Clemente, but I feel like everyone Clemente. So then I was like, I'm gonna either get Bonds or Stargell. What about Dave Parker? I I wasn't a big Dave Parker fan. But I thought Stargell was a monster, and then I've always been a huge Bonds fan. But I, I didn't like the Giants Bonds. Giants Bonds is steroid fat Bonds. Right. I wanted stealing 30, 40 bases and homering forty, you know, times Bonds, which which was Pirates Bonds to me. So that's the Bonds I wanted. <laughs> right. No, I I actually just decided. You know, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just get a Brant Brown jersey. <laughs> So, I'm I'm all set. I don't. Do they even sell those? How do you find? Do I, you have I'm one? sure I can get a custom jersey made. <laughs> so. the, the best would be if you like if you like went to like buy it and some guys got this. I mean, maybe Brant Brown himself. You might be buying it from. I, I could probably buy his game worn jersey for yeah. cheaper than what an authentic jersey with his custom name on the back would be. And let's be clear: if I did a custom jersey with Brant Brown, I'm not just doing his last name. I'm spelling out Brant Brown on oh, the yeah. back. <laughs> like, you should also I want put his chart on there. <laughs> right, I, exactly. I want people to know, you know. You get a patch of his chart, like on the sleeve. <laughs> oh, I've got Matt. That's know. what you should do next. Uh, instead of having a, all the pictures cards on your shirts, you should have like charts. player charts on your yeah sh- showdown shirts. That's our next venture. <laughs> you know, our next thing that we can, you know, probably get sued doing. <laughs> <laughs> so next up, we have Warren Morris. Um, actually, a very solid card here. We got an eight on base. Uh, with a with a decent plus fielding, um, 260 point value here. I don't like the huge single range, but he's not killing you. No, this is, this is good. I mean, I think it's the above average card. Um, what does the kid on the pirates hat mean? I don't know. Wow, good catch. I have no idea. Might it might have been a promo, but that's so bizarre. No, it's not a promo. Usually they do that when someone passed on away. Himself, yeah. Oh, it's got to be. Yeah. Wow, good catch on that. That's interesting. I just noticed it. I mean, it might have been on other ones, but I was just wondering. Um, well, anyway, if anybody knows, they can tell us. I, I'm having a hard time Googling it, but I'm wondering if, if someone passed away that I'm not not too familiar with at this time. But again, very Great. solid I... card. Um, 260 seems like a good range for here, but I, I don't like the huge single range. I'm probably not drafting this guy, but it's it's you not know... bad. No, he's not. He's like, I, don't, I also kind of agree. I don't think he would get drafted because there's nothing flashy here, but like, it's funny. I probably think this guy's more reliable than, uh, you know, than an Al Martin, you know, for 60 less points. So I don't I, know. Like, I forgot to ask Matt, do, can you tell me how many home runs Giles hit that year? Yeah. I, I just, I had it up a couple minutes ago. Cause I was like, uh, I was just thinking in my head, like, okay, well he had a 10, 17. I mean, he must've crushed the fucking ball. <laughs> yeah. He had a really good year. That's for sure. Um, it's, it's loading right now. He, uh, he hit, 39 and how many plate appearances or uh, 627 627 so a full yeah. year yeah full year 39 homers okay that's not too bad 33 doubles i just i feel like maybe 17 might be a little high for him then yeah because didn't chipper hit 40 yeah chipper fucking killed it <laughs> he was mvp that, make, that makes no sense <laughs> yeah well yeah. so we... it, it may have been plate appearances so <laughs> yeah and that's that's another thing I always um, talk about. Um, I me me and Peter go back and forth on this because um, he likes to see when a guy hits forty home runs, you know, he enters another tier of home run type of thing or fifty home runs, etc. But because of plate appearances, like this is why I always think Mickey Mantle was like the greatest Yankee ever because he never played like a full season. He was always hurt and he fucking killed the ball. So. You always got to look at plate appearances per home run, and that's actually what a lot of my calcs are based off of is home run per plate appearance, and then, then you have to calculate it back for a showdown card. But, um, you know, if a guy only played 400 plate appearances or, four hundred, you know, played two-thirds of a season and had, you know, 10 less home runs than the guy in first, well, that guy 200 more plate appearances, that's a big difference, you know. So yeah, Chipper hit 45 and 701 plate appearances, so it's oh. pretty close when you, okay. when you do so the numbers. Pretty, yeah, probably. it's pretty close. Wow, yeah, that's well, interesting. Well, we'll see when, when if, if and when um, someone named Matt uh, remasters the OO set, we can find out what he really is. Who's that? I don't know. I've never heard of that guy. Next up, this is my favorite card to talk about, is Todd Ritchie. Um, this is actually the hat that I like, uh, Jeff, is the super gray hat. 
Um, I, yeah. I this the hat I own is the gray. The gray hat is a really sharp look. But I I describe this card all the time. The in my opinion, the most standard five hundred point player is Todd Ritchie. He's a seven <laughs> inning, five control, one through fifteen out with a double. Super standard. <laughs> I base everything in my pitching things off Todd Ritchie. I think like Omar Dahl is like five ten. So I'm like, nope, he's not Todd Ritchie. Five hundred points, you know. <laughs> so I always talk about this, and Matt knows this all the time because I never remember his name. I'm always like, what's that guy from the Pirates? That's the guy. So Todd Ritchie's yeah. the guy I like. Yeah, I mean, I'm in like I'm super into this. I would be super into this to have this in a 2019 version, which oh, yeah. I don't think really exists. Did he you do know? good that year? He was really good that year. Okay, good. That's what I, I, I want mean, to like, make sure. Like he he had like a 3.49 ERA and uh, a 1.2 whip. So he was in that tier. Okay. So it's pretty solid. Yeah. Next up, Scott Sauerbach. Um, so we got a three control. <laughs> this is basically the car we saw earlier, but with the double and he's 10 less points so yeah, for sure i'd rather have the other guy <laughs> yeah no question he should be i mean if we're just going off the same basis he should be at least 20 points less but and man look at this um, picture he's like Bleh. yeah, yeah he's, he's a little yeah if i saw that guy throwing at me i probably would also be scared so when, when it looks that, like he's that, graying too this guy looks like he's a hundred <laughs> <laughs> when that guy remasters the set potentially like it's gonna look a lot different yeah oh, i can't wait he had he he had like a two ERA, and like a one point three WHIP. Like he was like the same level as Jeff Zimmerman and the famous Doug Burkale. Oh shit! Really? Wow, yeah. dude! Wow, I gotta ugh, I so gotta they, change they my opinion here. They shafted the shit out of this guy. All right. <laughs> wow, that's he, disappointing. His number finished between those two, so I don't get how he got he lost two outs on his chart. Must have been well. I was gonna say something inappropriate here. I'll just just disregard. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, that's really disappointing, especially after we saw that 120 guy who was actually technically quote unquote better. Right. And this is the guy that I, if, 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 if his real value would have been better, that's the guy you want, you know? So that's right. disappointing. Um, next up, Jason Schmidt. Um, pretty you know, standard. This, I mean, this super gray with that like porn star mustache this guy has, but yeah, again, <laughs> yeah, this is, yeah, yeah this, he, this, this, this could he, be 1970. Yeah. For all <laughs> So this is, yeah, like Jeff said, pretty very standard. Three thirty for a one through sixteen out three guy. This is just like we saw earlier. So again, you can if you need more standard type pitchers at a three control, this is the guy you're going for. Again, in two thousand they didn't do twos and ones. Not until oh one did they go to control twos and control ones. So a lot of times you either got the zero guy or you went to the three control guy. So you had to figure yeah, I think out. There was like two two controls, and they're both bullpen guys. Are they? They're pennant. No, they're uh, he's on one's on the Cardinals and the other one's on the Royals. Wait, back up. You're saying there's no control one or two pitchers? Well, other than, I would have said that until Matt just corrected me. <laughs> I just know because I was playing with the Cardinals today, and they have their closers a two. That's crazy. Well, so how yeah. the hell did they they did they decide that of all there's no going to be no ones? We're going to do zeros. <laughs> we're not going to do any twos except for these two random people. <laughs> yeah, right. No wonder no all idea. these. No wonder all these cards are the same. Like I don't know how I've never known that. Like they're 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 oh my gosh. Like yes. did we just not or were all these pitchers great? Like or did they no. just take bad pitchers and make them all actually okay? That's that's what I wow. think. Dude. <laughs> wow. Blowing my mind over here. Next up Ed Sprague. Um I I don't like the 1 through 5 out here. Again, this looks like a spring training photo. Um an 8 DH, for 280 maybe? for no fielding is a little rough. Right. I yeah. think DH at best here. Yeah. Just I'm just not sold on that he's not like overpowering me here for two eighty, like a ton of ton of ton of uh, pop, but it's not really not really thrilled about it. Mike Williams I actually know has gotten drafted because again, not many um not many people are under a hundred points. So to save salary, a lot of people have to find these players. This right. guy with no doubles and a huge, obviously, outrange, I've seen get drafted. He's 30 points difference from, from Dude, the first guy. That's you're, I know, but in my, with the closer bonus league, you know what I mean? You know, closer bonus. Yeah, closer Dude. bonus. Um, you, you had to get a closer, and so people were like, who am I going to grab, and I have to spend zero salary basically doing this. Yeah. yeah, you're totally right. And so, like again, with my league where you had to draft a closer because they 
shit can this thing where they just boosted all the closers up for no reason. This guy's like a 50 point player, you know, and they just boosted him up. It's not bad to see this kind of value from this. If you're talking about with the bonus, this is what you're getting. Um, other than that, why would you reject this guy? I would rather have the, the guy we just saw earlier, Sourback. <laughs> yep, just just ration accordingly Sourback. and get you know get good relievers. All right, next up we have Kevin Young. So, great card. I've actually seen this guy drafted a lot um, because of he, again, fills all those things. Um, he's got a big on base, A speed, plus fielding at first. Um, and it has a big chart, 14 plus single, or 14 single plus, 15 double. Um, it's actually really good. I, I like this card a lot. I've seen him drafted. 440 is a pretty pricey, but, um, I mean, it's pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's up to you. I mean, it, it's, it, as you know this, um, Matt, he was the best fielder at first base in 99. <laughs> yes. He, by a lot, like five points rated high. Yeah, so this is why, again, we do a lot of the plus two stuff. We try to get that extra bonus for people that deserve it. He was by far better than everyone else. Not just clo- not not close. He was by far better. So he should have got a quote-unquote plus two, but they didn't do that back then. But a great card in general. Yeah, I agree. I mean, he's he hit 40 doubles that year, I mean, wow. he, and he stole 22 bases. So it's he's a really good player for, for that. Uh, I, and I agree. I think that's 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 excellent. And I think his card is actually very very valuable and really it shows it really well. Um, but I, I I again my brother my brother again he's overseas now fighting. But um, he uh, he uh, loved this card. He was like I I want a speed A guy, great on base and plus fielding. Now again Jeff knows this plus one maybe a little overrated at first base, um, but. If he was a plus two, Jeff, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, the, the one thing that's so... If he was plus two, this card would be incredible. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's a lot like J- Jason Kendall, just because he checks a lot of boxes all at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's got the he's got the on base. Like, it's not it's not as high as it could be, but it's, it's you know, it's still pretty high. Um, chart is pretty good. He's got the defense. He's got the speed. Um, so, so, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm, I, I feel like for 440, I don't... I don't hate this. Like, I, I feel like yeah. I, I don't know why I've never paid as much attention to this one. Yeah. And I know, again, my brother had uh, really liked this card a lot. Um, but it happens sometimes. I mean, you, you, again, I think would have been really valuable is if Showdown back in the day did think about like increasing some people that had so much better fielding or so much better, whatever. Um, if he was by far, I mean, we were looking at the statistics the other day. Uh, he was by far better than everyone else. Like, way better at first base. We're talking about first base only. That's why we give people like that the plus two. Right. All right, I'm going to move on here uh, to the next guy here in a second. Whoa, just got to... Hold on. Sorry, we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of audio stuff here, too, with the team during this COVID-19 stuff that we're, that we're getting into. Um, let's see here. Next up, we got Jason Christensen. So another reliever here, that's you know I don't know if we want to talk I, I, standard. I don't know if that's the right word um, for one thirty here. You know, what's what's interesting here is now he's got one more um, out than the normal guy. So we had the one hundred twenty point player earlier, and he was. Um, you guys got to see me for a second. Woo! Okay, now I think you can hear everybody else. There we go. All right, back on. Yeah, so sorry about that, everybody. We, we just moved on to Jason Christensen, and we had a little bit of technical difficulties here during this COVID-19 experiment stuff that we're doing. Now, this guy, A, I love the picture. He looks like he's about to fucking kill this yeah, ball. This is a scary dude right here. Like, I don't want to get pitched at by this guy. Side note, with Gallo the other day, I love that. Was it you that posted that? Like, that Gallo, like, he, I, I said earlier he was bitching about his MLB show the picture and then LB show fixed it. <laughs> oh, it's, I wish they, why did they like, I would have loved if they didn't fix it. Just like, just, I don't know how they got there. Like, it's, it's so funny. Cause when I was first watching, so to catch everyone up, there's a video, a gal has been playing a ton of MLB show and he's been live streaming it, which is just a really cool experience for everybody. Um, and he goes on like a mini rant, you know, talking about his teammates and the way he talks about his teammates is great. And, um, and he talks about how like 
this guy looks badass. That guy looks yeah. cool. And then I'm not joking. They go to Gallo. And first, and first in my mind, I was thinking like, man, it's probably not going to be that bad. They're, he's probably exaggerating. It probably just looks bad to him. But then they go to it and it actually was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like it, his face, it looks like they picked the picture where he saw a ghost for the first time. <laughs> and like his swing, like it looks like, I think he had struck out. Like it, it was like two, like somebody clearly who developed the show had something against Gallo and said, you know what, like, we're going to make him look like shit. But then he complained about it and then they fixed it. So um, I'm not even sure how we got there, but like, well, the, the reason you know, I was saying is because I really like this picture. I'm like, this is the kind of picture I want. I want a fucking yes. fierce ass looking picture. Yeah. It's like, it's so like, I really, I just like, I think because this is like our world and we think about this and talk about this all the time that we think these cards matter to like the players who are actually on them. And I'm sure there are some out there that are, you know, have every baseball card they were on in any capacity. But like, I want to know, like, if does, does Jason Christensen like look at this and be like, dude, fuck yeah, like they nailed it. <laughs> but like, is there like Sean Casey out there? Yeah, who, like, yeah, looks yeah. At his and it's like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Like, I, I really, I mm -hmm. like, I feel like if we ever get the opportunity to like talk to like an old baseball player who might even be, might even be Brant Brown level. You know, I want to like find Doug out like Brokale. Oh my God! It's <laughs> fine. Don't don't get me excited over here. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna go Jose and Mark McGuire again. Um, I, I I need like I want to know if this was even a part of if this was even on the radar. If it was just I, I, another know, I just baseball. I don't think it was without social I, media. Now I think if it was I, happening I now, either. Trevor Bauer would be all over it. <laughs> right. I think that and like somebody for like those super ugly cards would be tweeting saying, dude, this looks awful. Yeah. Like there would be no, right. Like, and the, probably the most that these players saw of these cards was like signing them, like, you know, before games, like yeah. but that's, you're not, thinking I really want to get some of my cards signed. <laughs> oh, same. So I, was this guy, Matt, uh, better than Scott Sauerbeck <laughs> in over the whole season? Who knows? Cause the pennant run is sometimes different. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm assuming not because like, I, like I said, I was looking at the rankings of them all combined. He was like the, he was like a top 15 reliever. That's yeah. So like here we got a guy now, Jason Christensen. No, who's his got the his extra ERA out. is higher than the combined ERA and whip of Sauerbeck. Yeah. In 99. So would you take Jeff, would you take the guy that was 10 points less one through 16 out with no doubles or this guy who has no singles, one extra out and a double. I would take the 120 point. Who was that again? I'm going back. Clonks. Uh, it was Cl clonks. Yeah. I would take him. I would take I, that. You know, extra I kind of like this guy for ten more yeah. points, and he gets me one extra out. Like this is the kind of guy I'm looking at. I will say that the the fact that there's no single, and I know double's not great, but um, yeah, no, I I mean I'd probably still go clowns, but if but it was close. eighteen, nineteen, twenty walk single double, I'd be more debating it. But right. like with no single, I'm only getting hurt five percent of the time, and the other like I'm getting, I mean I'm I'm shutting them down. Like with just walks too, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like with you're gaining the five percent chance of getting an out too yeah instead of a walk it's a huge deal for only 10 points like that's a big i think that's a huge jump and i, I i've never played this card and i feel like i should have because for only 130 you're you're definitely getting your value here i think right so there's only 40 more points that amazing closures are bonus <laughs> <laughs> you're totally right next <laughs> up we got will cordero um Nothing too great here. Just a standard seven point or seven yeah. on base guy. Yeah, the the fourteen to sixteen single plus is the kind of the odd part it's, here. Yeah, especially yeah. Those, it's kind of cool. With two stolen bases in ninety nine. How many? With two. But, but and then he's <laughs> speed B. He's not even yeah. a speed A. It's just like the, these are the ones that we just kind of like like squint our eyes, shake our heads, yeah. and then just move on. Let's just fill it in somewhere. <laughs> Pennant run makes it fun because it's all projection based. He yeah. He was on the Indians in ninety nine. And he literally only had 217 plate appearances. It's like this guy, he's gonna so, steal yeah, so many bases. How is he gonna do? And he, I mean, and he did well in 2000 for Pittsburgh. Like he had 35 doubles, 16 homers, but he only stole one base. So, so speed was interesting. They did not know what they were doing. <laughs> and he got traded back to Cleveland in wow. 2000. You're super right because he shows up in a pennant run. Yeah, because like I, again, I've been like seeing some of these guys it, like show up back and forth between like. The pennant run, <laughs> like David Segee. yeah, Sagi, same thing. Hampton, like even with the foil, still throws me off. Like I don't know, it's I don't know what fucking he's, on he's on. He has, he has all four, doesn't he? He has four, right? He's yeah. in all four sets, which like, dude, like, 
that's the dream, I guess. If <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, he doesn't know it, but like, yeah. good for him. Someone but, needs uh, to like contact him and like send him all four cards. Like, I need yeah. some signatures, buddy. <laughs> Dude, I've like honestly, and I'm already getting way off topic. Like, I've thought about like you know, especially now, um, you know, with you know, I don't know if you guys know the Cameo app, but I've been like thinking a lot about it, especially in like the COVID world and the virtual world of you know being able to have these kind of unique experiences with with celebrities and you're paying them for it but like i've thought of like kind of in that in the context of showdown of like you know i'm sure there's some sort of you know some sort of a kind of communication method or platform or something in the past that was used to say like hey will cordero like can i send you a card and pay you 10 bucks for you to sign it and send it back like well, so a lot of times back in the day when you wanted uh signatures what you would have to do is you'd have to either talk to the team or send it into the team yep. and then what you would do is you would send an envelope with the card you wanted signed and uh, with an envelope that had pre -postage. paid postage and everything back to you so dude they, i would do that though yeah i used so to do it sometimes kid, it honestly. would happen and they would send it back to you sometimes people were like f that you know what i mean and the other thing i don't know is obviously Obviously, since now he's obviously probably he's retired now. Obviously, um, but is he? I don't know where Will Cadera's from. I'm gonna go a little race on here, and he's from the Dominican Republic or something like that. Right. A lot yeah. of these players. Then it's a very Puerto Rico. Yeah. It, so it's very hard. Then is he back in Puerto Rico? And if he is, obviously getting it to him is very difficult. But right. But, but if you somehow had a, if like honestly, I guarantee like you could is... email Trevor Bauer right now and be like, dude, how do I send this to you to get signed? And if you send him an envelope. With the cards and a return paid postage, he if he had time, he might do it. Dude, I'm telling you, I, like if I if I knew that was the case and I had a place to send them, um, like in a, even a general way for me to, and, and I'm not even talking about players to play now. I'm not even talking about big like big players. I'm talking about like Doug. I mean Doug Brokale coaches, but you know like that level. But dude, I would I would, and I don't even. I, I'm on some someone who does not give a shit about autographs. I just think that like in the game, scope of the game, like I, I found that I have a, um, I have an Andy Ashby signed card. I, I, I needed the card and some guy was selling it for two bucks and I bought it for two bucks because why not? And it looks awesome. And like <laughs> being able to play with that. And I have another one from the 2000 Red Sox and I can't, I cannot place it. Well, so we're going to talk, the, I think we're going to talk big, about it. Yeah. I think the big thing then, which made it, what made it easy is you could send it to the team. You yeah, would send right. it to the Pirates organization, and then they would give it give to it Will Cordero. But now right. it's like you'd have to email Trevor Bauer and be like, "Let me get your address." And <laughs> right? Like, I guess yeah, I, fuck you. I, <laughs> I could go on a crusade of just like I mean, I guess you could just go and try to find any of these guys that exist on Twitter, yeah, um, which I'm sure a bunch of them do, and just be like, "Hey, you know, sending you a message like, could I send you this?" and like most of them probably won't respond and some of them will, but it's like, it's crazy that there hasn't been like a, like a, like a platform or an app or something that's like been able to kind of formalize that, that communication. So that like, I know that Will Cordero or Doug Brocale always charges $15 for, for an autograph. You know what I mean? I would think that's so shitty if they charged for it, but I guess yeah. they could. <laughs> I mean, that's and Jeff to go to like, we're going way off topic, but like card conventions and stuff there, there's always players at that. Like when the Indians do their tribe fest in the winter, like there's all these older players there. I, every team does those. So yeah, that's another way. That was the right. I, and I talked to my buddy who goes to those tribe fests every time, and I asked him if I gave you some Indians cards, would you can you get them signed? He goes, it is one signature per like per person. Yeah. So it my buddy already has something that he wants to get signed, like a hat or right. a card. So it's like I can't add another card. Right. Like, and I'm like, fuck. So that means I would have to go to this thing to get my own card signed. <laughs> yep. Can I, can I, I did, we'd go downtown to, because my cousin knew what hotel the away team stayed at, and we'd wait outside and get them like before they left for the game. Yeah, that's the key. That's how you do it. Yep. Um, that's, so anyway, I'm like way off topic. And I really want to, I want to bring up something separate because I just remembered this. Um, at Great Lakes Mall in Mentor, Ohio, which we here on this podcast know, maybe some, the Mecca. Do, yeah. They, I remember back, and maybe it was when Showdown came out. I remember um, that there was an autograph signing session, and it was CC Sabathia and Bartolo Colon. Oh. And you had you had to pick one um, to get an autograph. Who do you pick? Oh, it's terrible. Uh, I'm picking CC. Yeah. yeah. Now I'd pick CC. At the time, you, I don't know what I would have picked, but <laughs> I, I think I, I had a ball, and I think I I think I picked CC. 
if if I, I if I somehow had to pick Bartolo or got Bartolo, I'd want to say Big Sexy on it. <laughs> oh man, he was still medium at the time, though. Well, that's a yeah. yeah. yeah he <laughs> wasn't. <big>, yeah. <laughs> I don't think he was ever a medium. <laughs> <laughs> a medium sexy. <laughs> Next up, we have Francisco Cordova, and um, pretty solid card here. So now you're talking yeah. about the same tier as the three one through sixteen out guys uh, for the same points, but now you're getting the four. One through extra. fifteen out, so pretty interesting. Right, I Just would the... probably want this one over a three, but I don't either want any of them if I if I had to choose. <laughs> no, true for the same cost though. I think you have the control four matters way more than that one out or that one less out. It, it, it's closer than you think, but I think you're right. I think the one extra control is worth just a smidgen more than the extra out. But I will say when you get to like um, control five. 15 out versus the control four one through 16 out i prefer the control four one through 16 out and that's where it starts to get shaky when you start to <laughs> being able to overpower the when you get more towards the higher end of control like i wouldn't want a six one through 15 out i'd rather have a five one through 16 out like i want that extra out when i'm already beating the batter more times <laughs> right so that's what's interesting about that but solid interesting debate there and uh, next up, we got Chad Hernandez. I've actually drafted this guy. Hermanson. Herman, Chad Hermanson. Chad Hermanson. Um, so the reason I drafted this guy is because he's 10 points less than uh, Brent Brown. <laughs> um, one one less home run, but I get the OF plus two. <laughs> the OF plus two is everything, man. Yeah. It's a lot for 210. Uh, and I, um, I drafted this guy in our league, uh, Jeff, and I traded him after one game. Oh. I, I, needed, I needed to increase my – it cost too much to roster this guy. And it hurt me too much. Like it hurt. Like I could get a OF plus two for like a hundred something points. Like yeah. it killed me. But right. it was cool to think about. But after I played, I think one or two games with him, I never got the advantage. So he was only hitting singles or doubles off pitchers charts. And then after that, he was just an A, a speed plus two outfield for two hundred ten points, and that's what hurt. Right. <laughs> no, He's I mean, a pure prospect card. Really? He had sixty nine plate appearances in ninety nine. Wow. So they just draft. Ah, yeah, this is... Well, how many home runs like, in that 69 plate appearances? One. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude. Uh, so I, don't, I don't know what he did in the minors. Maybe he was mashing. <laughs> oh, wait, I can get the minors. Wow. So in 99, he hit 32 homers in the minors. And how many plate appearances? Good. 539. So yeah, that's it actually would been rounded up. Pretty good. Yeah. Than. Yeah, that's pretty good. So why not? Give just yeah. fuck it. Give, give him this card. You know, <laughs> he's gonna be a monster. So basically, he's again. I prefer this card over Brant Brown. If you're choosing uh, yep. for ten less points, you get the one extra outfield, which I think is huge. You get the A speed. I think it's a great card. But for two ten, it's still pretty, pretty expensive. Yeah, it's just a five. I just can't do five. Yeah, it's I hard. can't do on base five. They just. <laughs> Not not in the two thousands that no. it just doesn't. I, you know. Again, as Jeff said earlier, if this blind draft fell to me, I would be pretty pumped to see what happens. <laughs> right, just why not? You know. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, we got Pat Mears. Um, at least it's at least he's a six. Like that's you yeah. know what I mean. Like at one ten, like these not great shortstop, especially since there's a lot of great shortstops. But um, I mean, fill on a. Is rough. I don't know. Rough. Yeah, you could take it back to their uh, to the very first card from this team, and you got another 110 point shortstop. That's a five on base. Yep. Right. But he's a plus five. Right. Yeah. That's what I mean. So, like, which one? Plus five. Plus five. I would For take sure. the plus I want five. The plus De- definitely five. plus five. Yeah. And that's just because I'm already punting at shortstop. I don't want an on base yeah. six, like at all. So if I'm gonna punt, I'm just gonna say fuck it. He's batting ninth. Yeah, at least you're getting a yeah, and he's hitting ninth as your speed yeah. A plus five shortstop. Absolutely. Next up, we have our last card, Armas Ramirez, who I know k- used to kill it for the Cubs. Um, this is actually a pretty solid card here. Uh, it sucks with the out range, but uh, the eight with nineteen home run for two forty, pretty good. Two forty um, is for two forty. This is great. Yeah, it says you got a little bit of extra pop here. I wish he had just a tad more double range or something. Um, it just seems like he hurts you in the lower three three fourths of your uh, of your card, right? Um, and no extra bonus for fielding, but it's still pretty solid. I mean, I'm not hating on this card for eight for two forty, but I'm I'm probably not going for this card. I'd rather get like a Scott Rowland or something. But yeah. 
I mean, he's yeah. solid. I, I know he's always been a, he's been a pretty solid baseball player in general. So he looks like he just smoked this fucking ball too. Oh, he's he's <laughs> definitely he's looking at the ball. Yeah. You know, he just went over the fence. Yeah. Like you guys see that shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. All right. Any closing words on the podcast, guys? No, just uh, researching my Brand Brown jersey. I'll let you guys know where I la- end and up on that. Someone find out what the kid in the on the in the hat meant. <laughs> right. All right, thanks, everybody, and stay tuned for next time.